Now let's explain TCP congestion control, which you may have seen in real life without realizing it. We previously explained TCP flow control and how it controls traffic from the sender to the receiver. However, for efficient communication, flow control alone is not sufficient, and that is because devices in the middle of the network, for example routers and switches, also have their own buffers, and they might get overwhelmed if we do not take them into account. We do not want to be the bad guys who congest the network, and for this reason TCP congestion control exists. While flow control takes into account the receiver only, congestion control will take into account the whole network by using a set of algorithms to adjust the rate at which data is transmitted. While the details and the values may differ, here's how it generally works in a modern TCP network. When a TCP connection is established, it starts with a slow start phase. The sender will start with an initial value called the congestion window. Its initial value is a small number, for example one maximum segment size of 1460 bytes. After sending the initial packets, the sender waits for ACKs from the receiver. For every ACK received, the sender will increase the congestion window by one segment size. With this exponential growth, the sender will quickly probe the network's capacity. Let's visualize an example to better understand this phase. Let's say the initial congestion window size is one maximum segment size and the sender receives the first ACK. As shown, for every single ACK received, the window increases by one segment size. As you might be thinking, this aggressive growth cannot continue forever, or else we would kill the network. This growth stops if either a threshold called the congestion avoidance threshold is reached, for example 65 kilobytes, or if a network congestion is detected. Once the congestion window size has reached the congestion avoidance threshold, it enters the congestion avoidance phase. In this phase, the sender sends packets at a rate that is slower than slow start, because it increases the congestion window by one segment for every round trip time that has passed, and not for every single ACK. For example, if the sender sends three packets, the congestion window size will only increase when all these three packets have been acknowledged. Now let's explain what happens when congestion is detected. Congestion detection refers to the process of identifying network congestion. Two common methods for detecting congestion are packet loss and explicit congestion notification. Let's visualize packet loss. For each packet sent, the sender keeps a timer for its corresponding ACK. If that timer expires, then the packet is considered lost. When congestion is detected, the congestion window size is reset to its initial size, the congestion avoidance threshold is reduced, for example let's say it becomes the maximum between two maximum segment sizes, and half the previous congestion window size, and we start all over again with slow start. This time however, we will reach the congestion avoidance phase quicker. The sender window, at a time, would be the minimum between the congestion window size and the receiver window size. Both the receiver and the network are entities that determines the size of the sender's window. So that's it. A quick explanation about how TCP congestion control works at a high level. Again, the details of the values and formulas differ from a TCP variant to another, but that's the gist of it. See you later.